week this coming Thursday at 6.30 here at the Meeting House. If you want more information about connecting with the board or the board meetings, the best person for you to be in touch with is Martha Potter, who is president of our board. And my second announcement, we don't have many events this week, but we are beginning this week our RE, Religious Exploration Year. And so my invitation is for you to join us, which is to really join me and the younger elementary school age youth in our congregation this year as we explore windows and mirrors, how we see ourselves, how we see each other, how we see the world. This is a really good opportunity for you to connect with the youth in this congregation and for them to connect with some of the adults in this congregation to grow their understanding of Unitarian Universalism and for them to build relationships with adults who are not their family. You can find, you can be in touch with me if you have more questions about that, especially if you're interested in joining us one Sunday. We're meeting about twice a month. And you can find more information about how to connect to any of our events in the e-bulletin, which is emailed to you on Thursdays, or on the events calendar on our website. Do we have any visitors who would like to introduce yourselves this morning? Sure. Hi, I'm Carolyn Holstein. This went out in the e-bulletin this week, but just in case you missed it, we're going to be starting on the UUA Common Read, which is something they put up every year. It's a book that congregations can read in community and discuss, and we even have free copies. So if anyone is interested, please see myself or Katie Ligari. And um, we're not going to start until the beginning of the new year. And, but we may be sending out some materials along the way. So it gives us a good chance to try to take it in and digest it, and then to gather later on. So thank you. And thank you. If you have other announcements that you want to share, uh, the best way to get them to the bulletin is to get them to Kelly, our administrator, by Tuesday of the week that you want them announced. And if you are visiting in person or online, we invite you to sign our guest book in our fellowship hall or using the link in your chat. And it's a way for us to let you know more about what's happening here and also for us to learn more about what your interests are. Now's our time to take a moment to greet your neighbor or someone who you haven't greeted yet this morning. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. He let us in, knows where we've been in his octopus's garden in the shade. I'd ask my friends to come and see an octopus's garden with me I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade 
we would be warm below the storm in a little hideaway beneath the waves resting our head on the seabed in an octopus's garden near a cave we would sing and dance around because we know we can't be found i'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade We would shout and swim about the coral that lies beneath the waves. Oh, what joy for every girl and boy, knowing that they're happy and they're safe. We would be so happy, you and me, no one there to tell us what to do. I like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade in an octopus's garden in the shade in an octopus's garden in the shade If you are paying attention to the bulletin, then you probably know that we were intending, really hoping, to be doing this service, this water communion, outside in our garden in the shade. And it seems fitting that it is water that has driven us indoors for our water communion. On this last Sunday of September, as we conclude our exploration of beauty, we often think about beauty as the beauty of the outdoors here when we live so close, so surrounded by natural beauty. It is an easy reach. This service, our water communion, reminds us of the beauty in our relationships to each other. We settle into our worship by lighting our chalice which is a symbol of our shared faith. Perhaps someone will self-volunteer to light our chalice with these words from the Reverend Leslie Takahashi. We gather as many drops, each winding our own path down life's surfaces and ruts. Here, we pull together as a single body flowing together for a time. Together we are a stream, at times even a river. For with our shared force, we can travel toward oceans of meaning and seas of connection. Our first song to sing together is in your hymnal, but it's a pretty easy one to sing without it. The words are also printed on your order of service inside. I've got peace like a river. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. I promise you don't need the hymnal. I invite you to stand as you feel willing and able.
joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Love like an ocean. I've got love like a ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. Strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like Kent with the harmony. Is that harmony? Our first message this morning requires a little bit of help. We've got some drops, some readers who are joining me at the front of the room now. That's what this means. <laughs> oh, here, we're take this one. Borrow Stephen's microphones. We need both of them. Two microphones. And we're just going to pass them around. Everybody knows what order they're in. It's going to be a little bit wild. Just drop one. Drop one. So one and two need the microphones. And we have three. So we'll just figure it out. This is a once upon a time story. Once upon a time, there was a drop of water named Higgins. But Higgins was no ordinary drop of water. Higgins was a drop with a dream. Higgins lived in a valley where it had not rained in a very long time. All the beautiful flowers were wilting and all the trees were starting to droop. Higgins had a dream that one day the valley would be a beautiful place again. But what could he do? What could she do? After all, she was just one drop of water. One day Higgins decided to travel and tell the others about this dream. All the other drops listened politely, but no one, no one, believed that this dream could come true. Higgins, get your head out of the clouds. You can't spend your whole life dreaming. Higgins decided that she had to do something to make this dream come true. So she began to think and think and think. And one day, as she was walking by a rusty old bucket, she got an idea. If enough of us drops of water got together in this bucket, there would be enough water to sprinkle on a few flowers to help them grow and become beautiful again. Eagerly, Higgins told everyone this great idea. But everyone thought she was being foolish. That Higgins is nothing but a dreamer. Higgins decided that she could do something to convince the others that she was right. And so she said to them, I don't know about you, but I'm getting into the bucket. 
I hope some of you will join me. Then there might be enough water to help at least some flowers grow beautiful again. So we didn't rehearse this part. <laughs> but Higgins ran as hard as she could, hopped way up into the air, and landed with a kerplunk <laughs> at the bottom of the bucket. And there she sat, just one drop of water, one drop in the bucket. For a long time, Higgins was very lonely. It seemed that no one else was going to join her. But after a while, some of the other drops could see that the grass was dying, the flowers were wilting, the trees were drooping. They all agreed that something must be done. Suddenly, one drop shouted, I'm going in the bucket with Higgins. And he leaped through the air and landed kerplunk in the bucket. Then two other drops yelled, Wait for us! Wait! And they hopped through the air and landed in the bucket. Then ten drops jumped through the air into the bucket. You're in the bucket? Then thirty! We lost drop three. <laughs> then 50, and then 100 of drops came from all around just to hop into the bucket. Soon the bucket was completely full of water, but there were still more drops that wanted to join. So they found another bucket and hopped in. Before long, there were two buckets of water, then three, then four, then ten, and then hundreds, and then thousands of buckets of water. Along came a powerful breeze that blew over all the buckets, and all the water flowed together to make a mighty stream. Everywhere the water flowed, the grass turned green again, and the flowers bloomed, and the trees stood tall and straight once more. All of this happened because Higgins had a dream, and that dream came true. Because Higgins knew that although she was just one drop in the bucket, enough drops in the bucket, make a bucket full. And when there are enough buckets with the wind behind them, then justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. May your roots grow deep. May your branches spread far. May you find this world to be a wonderful place with companions at your side and the wind at your back and make it better for those who follow. We support the work of this congregation through the gifts of our time and our talents and our treasure. Your financial contributions help to support the ongoing work of this congregation, including worship and spiritual care and community service. Your generosity is reflected in the ways that we are able to show up for and with each other. To contribute, the baskets will circulate from the back of the room, one for the work of this congregation and the second for our helping hand fund, which goes to support local organizations in need. Your contributions will be graciously accepted. Someone told me long ago 
There's a calm before the storm, I know. It's been coming for some time. When it's over, so they say, it'll rain a sunny day. I know, shining down like water. Sunny day. Yesterday and days before, sun is cold and rain is hot. I know it's been that way for all my time till forever on it goes. Through the circle, fast and slow, I know it can't stop. I wonder. I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath. As we move into this meditation, possibly better suited for the outdoors, yet perfectly appropriate for any place where we want to notice what surrounds us. And so for this five senses meditation, with a chime today, I'm going to invite you into whatever breath is available, shallow or deep or somewhere in between. And maybe your next is deeper. And you might want to open your eyes to notice five things as you breathe that you can see.
and four things that you can touch. Next three things that you can hear. And two things that you can smell. And always the most interesting, one thing that you can taste. Whenever and wherever we are, our five senses are always with us, and we can notice and be present. We take this moment nestled in the middle of our service to share our deep joys and concerns for ourselves and each other and the world. If you have a joy or a concern to share here in the meeting house, I invite you to come forward to the microphone. If you're joining us online, we invite you to unmute yourself and we will spotlight you on the screen. I'm Eva Roberts. Joys, spiritual joys. I spent several hours in the woods with a tree identification walk yesterday on got to know the trees with the help of Jackson, the, the arborist, and Day Dayton of the Greenbelt Trails or whatever. But it was, it was just wonderful. Uh, it was like forest bathing. Another joy and great relief is in the first time for many, many years now, I am housing secure, uh, thanks to the American Relief Act. I am up to date on my mortgage, so I can start to actualize a little bit better now. Uh, concerns. I'm in, I, I'm in, I live in Riverhead. There's been some name calling and physical I don't know how to quote it from the papers, or, but there's been the N-word used on the school grounds at a sports event. 
This comes in addition to the anti-Hispanic comments I've heard and reported myself. So those are my concerns. Hi, David, I and our whole family have a great joy. We have a new granddaughter, um, just born in Colorado on Tuesday. And Allie had a little girl named Poppy Quinn Dwyer. And we get to go and see her on Tuesday. So um, we are very much looking forward to that. My name is Carol. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to my amazingly wonderful, beautiful son, Andrew, and um, to wish him blessings and to say what a blessing he is in my life. A, a joy of um, starting a new job that's at the Children's Museum up the street and it's going really well so far and um, if anybody needs any tickets <laughs> 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 and I have a concern about my work uh, at the Duck Creek Art Center it's just and it's just the stress of uh, my ability to hold on to stress and so it's everything, uh, it's like life, and then being a parent, it's like, how do you do it all? <laughs> so there's, uh, but yeah, it's like you keep trying, uh, and you find, uh, you find the balance, and um, yeah, it's, that's life. <laughs> My name is Katie, and I just wanted to share a great joy that I have in my heart um, through my very middle-aged hobby of genealogy. Uh, <laughs> I found some uh, very distant relatives, but they were able to answer a lot of questions about um, my family, my last name, where we come from, and um, offer a lot of love and closure when they came and stayed with us for Rosh Hashanah last week. And um, we made hala together, and it was, it was a very beautiful, moving experience for myself and for our family. So this is a great joy for connecting to family we didn't know we had. Hi, this is Luca. Can you hear me on Zoom? Hello? Can you hear me? We on Zoom can hear you. Hi, oh. I'm Tuna. Oh. I haven't been here in a bit. I'll try it again later. And I just want to say I really appreciate everybody holding their hand out and offering to help. I'm, I, I regret that I, I'm no good at accepting <laughs> that stuff, but I'm doing my best to to be able to take it in. And uh, I did go and look at the conic landings, so I think at some point in the future soon, I'll be trying to move over there because um, I, need, I need more help. And I just, I don't exactly know what kind of help I need, but here I be, I managed to get here. So. Can you hear those of us on Zoom? I don't think in the congregation they're hearing anything. 
Hello. That I guess not. I don't know. I tried before, but Go for I didn't it. get a response. Oh well. Maybe next week. I think they're muted. I guess so. We are figuring out our own issues then so that we can hear what it is that you have to share when you're ready. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. Oh. We can hear you. You can hear us? We can hear you. Oh, this is Luca. I have a, a little fragment of a poem I'd like to share with the group I, I wrote for this service. The wet street awash with stars.